You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I'm joined as ever by my guy, <laughs> JC, Joe Cole. <laughs> How are you doing, JC? It's early in the show to be dropping the barrel, right, boy. Yeah, well, I just thought you, you deserve it, my okay, friend. Okay, mate, okay. You just, you just, today, Joe, we, we've got lots coming up. We're talking about the race for the top four. We're talking about one of the most famous games in Premier League history. And to do that, I'm bringing on an absolute G. This guy is one of only 30 players to make over 500 Premier League appearances, over 100 international caps, including two World Cups for Australia. It's Mark Swartzer. How are you doing? You good? I'm well, thank you. That's unbelievable you, stats, that. It is. Two World that Cups for Australia. Awesome. It's, it's, yeah. What yeah. were they like? Because that's... Oh, amazing. Yeah, I had a chance to go to three, actually. Um, I, I was part of the whole campaign. We qualified for the third one, and I was already 40-odd years old, and I'd signed for Chelsea, and at the time it was a case of... Jose said to me, you'll, you'll play enough games to, to be fit and ready to go. And then I kind of got to the point where around November time, manager got the sack for the national team. And I just got to the point where I went, you know what? I, if I'm going to make a cut, now it is. Now's the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. not playing as many games as I probably thought I would or probably even Jose thought I'd play. Yeah, yeah. So I just made a decision. It was the first time ever, actually. I didn't want to go back with the national team. So I went, that's it. But I mean, but you played with a, you played and you played for quite a few uh, England you know, England managers. Sort yep. of, you know, I suppose the first, was it Middlesbrough your first club that you were at? Uh, well, Bradford City actually. Yeah, Chris yeah. Kamara was my first manager. R really, in English football. Cammy. Yeah, yeah. Cammy. What a Cammy's man! Was was I love that. Cammy. He's yeah. A guy, um, Paul Jewell was his first team coach. Yeah. Um, and then I was only there for three months, and then moved on to to Middlesbrough and had Brian Robson. Were you at Middlesbrough with uh, with the Ravenelli's, the Emersons? Yeah, yeah. So I oh, arrived. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rav Rav arrived. Uh, what was it? Ninety six, ninety seven. So the start of ninety six season. I arrived February ninety seven. So the old transfer window was open up. Yeah, yeah. In February. But that must have been a crazy time yeah. for that yeah. for Middlesbrough to have like yourself. Well, because that was a, I, I'm thinking. You know, we talked about Chelsea, and you know they were sort of the sort of. First team, really, and we talked about with Scotty mm. Minsa about Hullet, but for Middlesbrough at that time, oh, for Ravinelli, Giannini, how did they attract Emerson. all them Brazilians to Middlesbrough? Like, yeah, and obviously, no, but, obviously Rav, no, but Rav, literally, I mean, the, the story with Rav is insane. He was playing Juve the year before. Yeah, they won. They won the European Cup. Won the Scudetto. Yeah, they won, won the European he, Cup. Yeah, yeah. With Viali, get, uh, the story is he got a call saying you're leaving, you're going to Middlesbrough. He goes, I don't want to go there. He goes, we've, we're done. We've sold you. And in those days, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't mess with them. Yeah. They've told you you've been wow. sold, you've got to go. Yeah. And he had no idea where even Middlesbrough was, never even heard of it. <laughs> and they offered him, at the time, they, well, I mean, it was well documented, he was on 42 grand a week. Wow. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. So yeah. he, he signed, obviously, came to Middlesbrough, scored yeah. 31 goals. And you went down, and Juninho was arguably the player of the season. That, I mean, he grew, didn't he? Because he came yeah. the season before, yeah. and it took a little bit of time. But he, he grew in confidence, grew in stature, yeah. and that season was his season where he really came into it. It was an incredible I team of yeah. yeah, I love it. I love yeah. Joy yeah. to watch. Yeah. But you had like him, Emerson, Emerson. Jan Fjordtoft. Yeah, no, he was before that. So there was Mikkel back up front, uh, Emerson, Ravinelli at training. Really? The staff used to, the medical staff used to put bets on because when they knew he was in the starting eleven, so on a Friday you go out there and play eleven v eleven yeah. shape yeah. starting yeah. eleven, and they put bets on as, as to which minute. Uh, of training, he'd get injured. Really? And and pull out of the game on the, on, on the Saturday. Wow. And then he'd be back training on Monday. So what, just didn't like the game? Mentally and just I think, couldn't... I think, I think the expectation, I mean, me personally, I thought it was the expectation, being a local lad, mm. yeah. having to go out there and perform in front of all these people, mm. found it difficult. I mean, he did play where, games. Where, where did he go after Middlesbrough? He went to Aberdeen. Yeah. And he did really, really well at Aberdeen, yeah. actually. And they allowed him to commute back and forth at times. And he did really, really well, and they wanted him to stay, and he ended up saying, no, I want to go back home, I want to go back to Middlesbrough. Wow. And he went back to Middlesbrough and kind of, I think he may have ended up at Hartlepool or somewhere yeah, like that, yeah. and, or Darlington, and that was kind of the end of him. But a lot of incredible like talent. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good talent. To move on to, like, McLaren, when he, because that's something you guys yeah. have both got in, in, in common there, and, and, and what was it like? I mean... But it was, it was, you got to the Europa Cup final that year. We did, yeah. Well, that was that was at the end. So that was right at the end of his, te uh, his tenure at the club. When we first signed him, he was actually going to sign for West Ham. There was a big yeah. thing about him going to West Ham, coming to Middlesbrough. And then in the end, obviously, Steve Gibson was adamant. He was desperate for him and then mm. signed him. And then it was a complete upheaval. So yeah. we, we needed to move on after Brian Robson. Brian Robson did an amazing job at the club, brought all these players in, mm. changed the club, put the club on the map and all sorts of stuff. But we needed, we needed more discipline, organisation, and Steve McLaren came in and turned the club upside down and made it really, really professional. Yeah. Um, more modern kind of way. Brian 
unbelievable man manager, mm. top, yeah. top guy. Was of a different mentality, older mentality, obviously learnt from one of the, yeah. the greatest managers in this game in, in Sir Alex Ferguson. But he kind of also wanted to be that manager that everyone loved. Yeah. Mm. And the training sessions were pretty much mostly playing small-sided games. Yeah. Mm. Brian Robson played, Viv Anderson played on the other side and it was more about yeah. how yeah. many goals each of them scored and which team won yeah. and less yeah. about really doing a lot, a lot of tactical work with the yeah. team. Yeah. We got to the point where we needed that. Players were craving for it. So the changeover came at, a right, at the right time. Um, and the first two years were really, really good. Organisation, tactics, everything was really good under, under Steve McLaren. And then after that, it became a little bit, I think, his ego got a little bit carried away of himself. Yeah. All the, the hype about how, how well he'd been doing and the team was doing mm. all right, we were pro progressing. Mm. And then, then it became almost like whenever we had a bad performance, it was our fault. Oh, right. And never really his. Mm. And it got to the point in the end, actually, even that season, um, that last season, where relationships had pretty much broken down. I'd fallen out with him in the January. Jimmy Floyd Asselbank had fallen out. We were both on the bench, actually, in the game away at Arsenal. We lost 7-1. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 7 nil, I think it was, actually. And after the game, Steve McCarran came out and said, it was a great learning experience for these young players. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just gone to, gone to Arsenal, Highbury, and got absolutely yeah. smashed. Yeah, yeah. And that was probably the lowest point. And then we managed to patch things up reasonably well and we got to the UEFA Cup final. Yeah. That was his last game. And that was his last game in charge. And it was, I think at the time, it was ready for everyone. And I think the fact that the FA come in and took him as manager, I think, took Did a you lot. know he was going to, when he went, we, into, we, when he went into that UEFA Cup final? I'm pretty sure we did, yeah. I'm pretty sure we all knew, yeah. I think we all we all knew it was an it was a, it was a, a badly kept secret mm. and it hadn't been official, but we knew that it was that it was potentially going to be his last game and move on. Yeah. Uh, did you think that had an implication on when he came in as? Because <coughs> you, you look at it when he came in then to sort of as England manager. Yeah. You're a big part of that squad. Yeah, yeah. And you look at and obviously you talk about golden generations. He, mm. he comes in to sort of almost sort of you know the the, the, the golden generation. Mm. Do you think? I mean, what's, what's your memories of it? Because obviously, we all remember the Wally and the Broly, yeah. and you, you know, and whether you know that thing of you, I, mm. I, it always strikes me that if you go into something like the England job with a massive yeah. ego, you sort of you're on a bit of a hiding to nothing. Mm. I might be wrong. I've never managed England, but um, <laughs> or been in an England squad. Well, I've been yet. in one England squad. Not yet. <laughs> um, Not yet. But, but um, uh, how did you find him? How did you find working with him? Oh. I like, like I, I try and separate Steve the coach and Steve the manager. As a number two for Sven, yeah. he was the best number two I've ever come across. I thought he was brilliant. He, like I said, he's, he tactically the sessions were bright. He was bubbly, always energetic. The lads loved him. And we talk about some, someone like he could have been. Steve could have been where Brendan Rodgers is now if yeah. he picked the right jobs at the right time. You can't turn down the England job, but I think it was too early for him. And I will say that for instance. He's come in. The first thing we've done was drop Bex. Yeah. Didn't he? Get, get yeah, rid of Bex. Yeah. Like, I mean, Bex is a great player. Do you know what I mean? And, he, you know, there was, I think, he, he, look, he eventually come back round, didn't he, Bex? 2009, yeah. he made a comeback. Yeah. And, um, so he's, he's made a big decision early on. And what I would say about him is a, 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 is a man, he was unlucky. You know, yeah. like, Matt campaign for 2008, Paul Robinson. Yep. You know, throwing Croatia. throwing them in. Yeah. You know, but then he had a big decision. We played Croatia, the Wally and the Broly night. Yeah. Yeah. David James, Paul Robinson, Scott Carson. Now Paul Robinson had had an absolute torrid. Like we 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 literally every time someone had a shot against us, it felt like they were going to score with yeah. Robbo. Listen, Robbo was 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 a good goalkeeper. Yeah. Fan, you know, good goalkeeper for Spurs in England, but he was just having a bad moment, and it seemed to be every England game he's throwing one in. And then we got to the Croatia game where, and, and I think he told Robbo before he told the others that he wasn't playing. So Robbo, be dropped for England, it's a big thing. So, yeah. he, you know, he wasn't happy, you know. But then he had to choose between David James would have been the, the logical choice. Yeah. You know, he, he's an experienced goalkeeper at the time. He's been there, done it. But for some reason he went with Scott. Now, Scott, you know, it's great to see him get the game for Man City the other day. But for a young goalkeeper in that Magnitude at Wembley that game we needed when he needed a draw yeah. to qualify against a good Croatia side. He was twenty two when he got he twenty two, well. and he got best, told yeah. he got told either the day of the game or the night before the game. And he, he look, I remember looking at him, 
and thinking, you're nervous. And that's the last thing you want to get from your goalkeeper. And then he obviously made the two mistakes and we're 2-0 down at Wembley. Yeah. It's pouring down with rain against a very, very good Croatia side that went on in 2008 to have a great, great tournament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, we, like, we, 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 I looked over at Steve and he obviously had the brolly, didn't he, in your life? But I mean, to his credit, he tuned it out at half time. Mm. We come back to 2 2 2, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I think, what, what was I remember his team the game, like I think Crouchy time? scored, I think yeah. with Defoe, Crouchy, but. What was his team talk like at that time? What, what, I mean, that, that, I don't in remember itself, Tom, we're to talking about, like, as yeah. a manager, to galvanise a team, yeah. to, to, to come I, back out, you know. I, I, I mean, I was an England, I am an England fan. I love England, and, and mm. I, I, I'm, I've not been in a dressing room. I've not seen that. I'm gonna, as a fan, it's very, mm. it's cut and dry, isn't it? Mm. You look at Scott Carson, yeah. look at those moments, and you think, yeah, I'm going to judge you on that. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, when you think of that coming back to two all, to, to, to you know, the, 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 I've never seen Wembley like it. When we got back to two all, oh, it was like, wow, we've we've dug it, we've done it here, we dug it out, but we'd expended so much energy dragging ourselves back into the game. And then, you know, we, we dropped off. And then I think it was Petric scored the goal, if yeah. I remember rightly. It's one of the lowest points in, in, in my career because Scott, he, he, he dived over it and he didn't get there. But, yeah, it was just a horrible, horrible... I felt for Steve so much because he's a lovely fella. Yeah. He's a lovely fella and it just come too quick for him. And it just seemed like the gods transpired for him in that. I think if people go back and look at the, the errors in that qualifying campaign... You know, the things that went against him. Even when we was in Russia and we're one nil up and we're comfortable in the game before. And for some reason I was playing and I remember Rooney give the penalty away and like Ro- 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 you're like he never back there. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. well, just, just mad things happen. So I felt for Steve, but it just it was too soon for him. Too soon for him to take the England job, you should, but you can't turn it down. I think sometimes you can look at that and go, There is certainly an element of luck. Yeah. yeah. But you also make your own luck. Yeah. And the environment that you create, the, yeah. the decisions you make on who you select, yeah, yeah, that's sure. also not luck necessarily. Mm. That's that's good judgment. Yeah. That's knowing people, knowing yeah. who can handle it. Yeah. Key decision in picking a young goalkeeper and experience over yeah. a really experienced goalkeeper. See, my, my, my view is very kind of obviously it, it's uh, biased to a degree because I'm mm. basing on my own experiences yeah. and particularly in the last six months, 12 months of my experience yeah. with him as a, as a manager, I, I, I think when, whenever someone's under real lot of pressure, you get to see someone's true colours. Right. And I, I, what I can't handle is, and I found it very difficult, and I don't understand why so many managers do it, is they're not honest with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe, I'm not denying it, it's an incredibly difficult job to be a manager. Yeah. You know, you've got 25 players or 20, yeah. 25 players in a group. And you've got to remember exactly what you've told every player. Yeah. Mm. Because when, when, if I'm going to see the manager, I'm going to remember what you say to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you might not necessarily remember exactly what yeah, you've yeah, said yeah, to yeah. them. And as a player, you'll come back and go, this is what you said to me. And yeah. if you can't remember it or mm. if you've said something beforehand, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've not allowed him mm. to come out That's and say it. point. You look like an idiot yeah. as a manager and you lose the respect from a player straight away. And that happened with me with him. He was yeah. never honest with me. Mm. And I caught him out a few times. And mm. it led to me putting in a transfer request wanting to yeah. leave the club. And even after I came back off it, because they wouldn't let me go, he lied to me again. Yeah. And I should have gone back in there yeah. and, and hammered him for it. But it was 2006 going up to the World Cup, European yeah. Cup yeah, final yeah, coming yeah. up. And I was like, I've just got to get back to playing Gal. Well, we were on, on our way to hopefully getting to the European Cup yeah. final at that time. Yeah. Transfer window was closing and I was just like, well, I've got to get back to playing games. Yeah. yeah. So that going back to that, I think the manager has a massive responsibility for yeah. creating a good environment. Yeah. And a lot of that luck is created within that environment that is created by the manager. Yeah. Mm. And if you don't have a good one, then players, mm. as you know, when, when it gets tough you go that extra mile, you'll have more feeling, you'll have more consideration about mm. your job and what you're doing because you have so much of a strong connection yeah. with the manager or respect for the manager. If yeah. you don't have that, it's easy for a lot of people just to switch off a little bit and go, you know what, I'm not going to get an extra mile for him because mm. he would never do that to me. Next minute, he'll, 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 he'll lie to me again. Mm. I mean, talking on that, I mean, obviously from there, Gareth Southgate comes in. Yep. You know, so he's a teammate. Yep. You played behind him for five years. Five years. He comes in, yeah. and, and was was that straight? What, did he hit the ground running? How how was that as as a manager? Him, I think if you ask him, and I've spoken to him about it a few times, um, 
it was a, a job that he couldn't turn down because he always wanted to go into management. Yeah. yeah. But having spoken to him about it afterwards, he did say that he had some regret maybe not continuing and finishing as a player, but it yeah. was too good of an opportunity to turn down. I thought the first year or so he did he did well. Yeah. Two years. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was unfortunate to, to get the sack in the end because mm-hmm. he actually was doing all right at the time and they sacked him. It was all about timing and I thought, again, it was poor yeah. getting rid of him when they did. Um, I thought he kind of was given a job and and I think because it's all encompassing so big and so new in the job, I think he was given some freedom initially, but then afterwards they pulled a lot of the freedom in and it was yeah. basically, right, we're going to select players, we're going to bring in, in and out of players and you just basically go out there and coach them. And I think that was, a, that was probably in one way helpful for him, but in another yeah. way detrimental because mm. you have no control over who you work with and who you don't. Do you think that that's insane. sort of almost? I mean, well, if you there, does that stand you weirdly in good stead as an international manager? Because almost you're dealing with a pool of players <coughs> you have no control over. In a sense mm. of like, you know, England, you're going to have the talent that's around you. Just got mm. then. Well, in England, at least yeah. you get to select them. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, However yeah. big or small that yeah. group of players, yeah. you still have a process yeah. of selection. Yeah. So you still are in control as a manager of of who you want to work with, yeah, yeah. what yeah. sort of play, you know, system you want to play, and then the players you go out and pick with less responsibility in one way to those players because they're not really your... They're your players, but they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like yeah. you can swap and change mm. fairly easily. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think... Listen, I think you need experience anyway. There's no yeah. way you're going to get a national team yeah. without the experience. I think most of his experience then came with working within the FA. Yeah. yeah. So being involved right from the ground up and then being involved in the, the development program, yeah. Yeah. coaching the under-21s, that's, I think, where he gained all that experience, particularly working with national team level. Do you? Did you rate? Did you? Could you play with him much, Gareth? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He was in the England squads for a few years. My yeah, first yeah. few years, he was in there. Yeah, great, you, great, great fella. Did you see him then as being? Did, yeah. Could you? Could you yeah, like yeah, this? Yeah. Uh, is there? Is there a thing where you look at a player and you go, "He's going to be a great manager"? Yeah, but you're never right. No, you're never right. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like. Um, like Ashley Cole, for instance, doing his, his, his coaching badges at the moment. If you said to me, who's the last player you think would play, would want to be a coach? Yes, and he's obsessed with it. He's so into it. He's yeah. doing it. He's working at Chelsea now. So yeah, yeah. you're never right. But with Gareth, he always had the stature of a leader. I think he captained every club he was ever at. He captained so, Palace at a very young age. Yeah. yeah, you know, Villa, Palace. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. He's captained every club. Um, what, I think, what people think about Gareth, I think, because he's very, he's very straight, he's very honest. You know, and he, he he's he, he comes across as very FA. In what I mean by that is he he's, he he never he toes the line with what's said. But there's there's a there's a, a ruthless side to him. And not ruthless, not ruthless is the wrong word because that's got negative connotations. But he's, there's a there's a strong side to him. There'll be a, there'll be some there'll be a line yeah. that the players will know that they can't cross, and that's it. And I think. Mark, what he an alloy did with Steve, I think Gareth's very, very honest with his players. You yeah. know? And I think that's what stood him in good stead with this group of players, and that's why they're so behind him, because, you know, like, for instance, he... You know, that's a brilliant story. Do you have, wh- wh- who did Eric Dyer come up for the squad? Now, Eric yeah. Dyer's been a big part of his plans. And yeah. he, he met him at, this, at the uh, at St George's Park. He's come to say, look, Eric, you're probably not going to play. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Certainly the first two games. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you're a big player. Blah, blah, blah. So straight away he's on the front foot. He's told him what he's there for, you know, and, and, and he said he, he bought into it and he was brilliant. And he ended up, I think he ended up playing the last game of the yeah. three. So honesty is, is a massive thing. Was I'll he be taking into my well that game as well from what I remember, Eric. Yeah, I mean, Eric, Eric Dyer's, you know, I think he's I, never let England down. That's no, one thing you've got to say. He's, he's I always, think he was one of the players of the tournament. And I, I mean, it, but, but when he first came in, Gareth, you could sort of say that he was similar to, to Steve in a way, in the fact that he came in and he was like, that this is. Almost he sort of a few tail ends of that sort of golden gym. Mm. But he was like, this is how I'm going to do things. Yeah. They didn't ever feel a moment where, and, and I think it was, you know, as a fan, again, you sort of were, we were a bit like, because, you know, as an England manager, you know, you could probably, I think over the years, Venables was, mm. was universally loved. Robson was, univer- you know, uh, you sort of, you have those moments. I think mm. with Gareth, it was a sort of a bit of an air of suspicion and you're sort mm. of like, you know, but... I think the fans, that's the one thing I'd say is Gareth, almost above, you know, last person probably was Glenn Holder, I can remember, the fans brought into the fact he was bringing mm. young players through yeah. and it didn't seem to matter who you were. It didn't, mm. also it didn't matter to sort of, he didn't seem like he was terrified to, to no. turn around to anyone and say, you know what, you're not going to be playing for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, do you think that, 
that's the honesty that we're talking about in a way that Steve maybe struggled with. Yeah, that and, if, and if you compare the two, when you, you, you were doing that comparison about Steve and Gareth very clear in the way he wanted to play and, and being up front, out of the two, having worked with both, played with Gareth and worked with him in terms of the manager, the one I would believe is Gareth. Yeah. There's a track record of him as a person and being standing behind what he says and actually sticking to it. And and one of the interesting things is with him and with regards to England is talking about players being there on merit, being there on performances. Mm. And I think there's a there's a little bit of double standards in terms mm. of some players you'll pick based on what they've done for England and never yeah. you talk about Eric Dyer, for example, yeah, yeah. that he's never let England down. And uh, Jordan Pickford's another one. Yeah. So he'll never, he's never let England down. But then if you look at his club form, um, he's not at the level where you'd probably pick mm. someone else ahead of them. Who would yeah. you pick at the moment? Who's... In terms of which position? Goalkeeper. Uh, no, goalkeeper. No, goalkeeper. Yeah. Listen, I, I, and I'll, I'll go back on that. In terms of the last two or three months, Jordan Pickford's played very well. Yeah. yeah. So he's eliminated errors and he's yeah. actually played far, far yeah. better. So I don't know whether the breaks helped him. He's been yeah. able to get back to basics, work on his game, whatever it is. Yeah. He's actually been able to take stock a little bit, and I think he's come back. He seems calmer. Yeah. You know, I think mm. he needs to be calmer yeah, still yeah. again. Um, and he seems to have he's found a rhythm, and he's actually yeah. playing really well. Whereas prior to that, 12 months, 18 months beforehand, too many errors. Yeah. And, and based on that, I wouldn't have thought he'd be number one for England. Mm. Dean would, Henderson's coming in a late run for United? Or? Certainly last season, yeah. certainly uh, from the beginning of the season onwards. Nick Pope certainly did, yeah. definitely, uh, I think, uh, deserved the opportunity yeah. to, to play yeah. games and stay claim. Those two I would pick ahead of him yeah. up until that point. Now come the end of the season, it's a different yeah. scenario because mm-hmm. I think Jordan Pickford's played so well. And there's also the other thing you need to take into consideration is how he wants to play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if, if, if you were to go right now, this moment in time, who's played well in the last sort of six months, I would say it's, it's very, very close between Jordan Pickford and Nick Pope. Yeah. I think Henderson mm. hasn't played as well as he played last season. No. Right. And part of the reason for that as well is he's in and out of the team. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it ever works well for any goalkeepers. No. At United, they've got this, this thing of playing the goalkeeper in this game and that game, swapping and change. And we've seen it with uh, with Chelsea as well, with yeah. Kepper and Mendy. Mm. Mendy's maintained his form still. Kepper, I, yeah. I don't think he's done anything wrong. But it's hard because you can't... I don't think you can really win games for a team if you're in and out. You can do well mm. and OK, you can do your job, yeah. but not necessarily excel because well, you're not in a rhythm. You, you think of the, the t- top two teams, in, if you're going to go Liverpool and uh, and City... Those got that's almost yeah. Edison, Clear number Allison, ones yeah, are just going to play all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's sort of, I think even you know if you look at you know West Ham's this season, I think you know I mean I, I'm always like my heart's going. Fabianski's not playing. And I think yeah. that's it's a it's a big part. I mean Jordan Pickford's now he's come in at two to one favourite, uh, two to one on um, <laughs> with Coral to be the to start. The well, so where is this point in the show? <laughs> Where the big man just slips the odds in, <laughs> and it's that's when you know you're dealing with a true professional. Yeah. So, so have you lumped it on? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to lump. I've, I've got I have a little bet, so I'm looking out for that. I'm, like a hedge I'm, bet put, I'm hey, putting hey. Joe Cole coming back. Are you going for a, you going for a multi? <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole starting lineup. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I've been. With my wife now, 45 years, we're through childhood sweethearts. We've been together since we were 16 and 15. Oh, come on, Joe, you're starting to make me cry now. What's up yeah. here? Well, that's, what, that's, that's the intention, Alan, to make you all <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Joe is Alan's next winner. But yeah, while we're talking about those managers, and I, you know what? Um, I, I, I sort of, you know, football gets you now and again, and it yeah. hits that little bit of a moat. I watched uh, Roy Hodgson's that speech at Palace. Um, mm. And it is, you know, when you talk about people we should be proud of as, as, as managers in this country, mm. and, and, you know, obviously with England, it didn't necessarily go his way, but he comes out of my man. He comes, he's a Croydon boy. It's been mm. great to see him finish at Palace. But, you, you know, I, I'm a massive, I love my football. And, and when he was over at, you know, manager of Inter Milan back in the day, and, and you mm. think, oh, get out of Croydon, like a proper... Managing Inter yeah, Milan. You know, uh, that sort of, what was your, I mean, that was a great, that Fulham side. And that, mm. you, that Fulham side, you played some great football. Yeah. You, you were, that, when you talk about, Sides that I love just watching. Mm. It was it was a really you know it was a great cup run. And I mean, but what's your what's your memories of Roy? Um, oh, I've only got positive memories and and enormous amount of respect and gratitude to a large degree as well for for Roy. 
Um, I thought the way he carried himself, the way he conducted himself, honesty up front. They're talking about that integrity, about saying something and sticking to it. Mm. Consistency. Whether or not you agree with someone can be a difficult thing, but certainly over time as a player, you've been there. Mm. You know, manager makes a decision you don't agree with, you get left mm. out or whatever. As long as they're consistent, as long mm. as there's a genuine opinion and stick to it. Yeah. And then at least down the line, you don't flip it on its head and do something completely contrary to what you've given or a reason for in the past. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you yeah. say something about how you're playing and then about a part of your game and then you go back and go, well, listen, I've done this, I've done that, I've played well and I've, I've not made this mistake and that mistake. Yeah, but, but now it's something else. Yeah, you yeah. Know, be consistent with the criticism or, or, yeah. or with your reasonings for leaving someone out. And I think with Roy throughout, he's been pretty consistent. Yeah. And certainly with me, my experiences with him, he's been very, very consistent. You had, I mean, he, he signed you for Liverpool. Yeah. And then left you out at 2012 when he was England manager. Yeah, but I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was playing in France. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Like, it was an emotional thing. I, I did the game last night and I, I get on well with Roy and, and he's right. And we had a few, we had a few arguments um, at Liverpool. It didn't work for either of us yeah. at Liverpool. So, um you know, but we, I remember one argument in particular. We had a team meeting, and then we'd lost the Wolves at home. And I'd come on for 15, 20 minutes, yeah. and I give I give the ball away once in a game. But the other ten times, I kept it. Yeah. And he decided to dig me out about his giving the ball away, and it was a. And then, and then, uh, and then uh, after the meeting, I pulled him. I said that I just said like that's that's a liberty, but you're wrong there. That's bang out of order. And we had words, and then he, and then he. Talk about integrity. He went, "You're right. You're right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're right." You, and I thought, "Wow." He apologised, and I, for me, that's that's a man that because yeah. you can have a row, have a disagreement, whatever way you want to frame it. And then he went, "That was it." And then after that, fine, because you'd had a little thing. But rather than trying to be trying to be sneaky about it or, yeah. or say something or just he just admitted he was wrong. He shouldn't have said it. And then we got on. So last night to see him and we spoke to him on camera Yeah, and he's a gentleman and he's so switched on and they were t we asked him a question about how do you have the longevity in football 45 years and he said, he said what's so important is he said he said we, it's very it's easy to hark on about old times I think it was better back then and he said of course that's not true you know a lot of people as they get older what do they do oh, it's better in my day it's better yeah. he, he moves with the times he said well, some, some changes you like some changes you don't but he's constantly evolving as a manager and he was genuinely just, even the way he conducted himself. I thought afterwards was just, was just, a, just a mark just of a man. Brilliant, yeah. And and we should, we should cherish people like that because of the, the amount of, it, like the amount of knowledge he's gathered over I the think years the, in the, football. The, the thing about someone like Roy, and I know that you know, I think he, I think almost every England manager he had the hardest job because he was coming yeah. into the sort of golden. Oh job. yeah. He was yeah. trying to bolt that together and try and make one last sort of throw out of mm -hmm. dice. But actually, when you look at his career and look, you know, from managing Switzerland, from Inter Milan, from, for, for, you know, for, so working on the continent back mm -hmm. in the day, you know, one of the few, you know, he, along with Bobby, Ro I think one of the greatest shames of English football is that Bobby Robson wasn't in the back, back room, like somewhere in the background mm -hmm. for the FA with those younger managers coming through. Imagine. You know, I but he think, probably didn't want to. Yeah, maybe not. He probably not. just wanted to be on the football pitch and yeah, be that day-to-day yeah. -day yeah. hands-on as a manager. Do you think, that, do you think that's the thing with Roy? Do you think Roy... Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he I don't know with England, but yeah. certainly with Fulham, 90% <laughs> of the training sessions, 95% of the training sessions, he took himself. Wow. Yeah. And he took 90% of that session. Yeah. So the only bits he didn't take were... The actual warm-up, warm-up. So the strength and conditioning yeah. guys would take you yeah. for 15 yeah. minutes, or the players for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. Then Ray Lewington may do part of the drill, yeah. but Roy was hands-on with everything. Yeah. Everything he did. And as much as I tell a story, and I said it the other day again as well, is that you know the first three months, players were pulling their hair out. Yeah. Because we played, we did our sessions were repetitive. Mm. Yeah. They were tactical sessions. They were mm. running through uh, certain, certain drills. Yeah. Formations, mm. out balls, certain runs, how he wanted his midfield to perform, how he wanted his wider players to make movements to show themselves for the ball, mm. how he wanted his forward to come across. Bobby was pulling his air. Everyone was pulling their air out after the first three, up, up until the first three months. But results were happening. Mm. Then players started to realise actually there's a system in place. There's a fallback. There's a natural system now we're playing to. There's a natural mm. way of setting up. Mm. Even when individuals weren't playing particularly well, everyone just 
fell automatically into their roles and we were so difficult to break down. Mm. Still played some nice football. And then all you needed was a moment. And we, we'd win games 1-0. We'd win games 2-1 or whatever it is. But we yeah. didn't concede a lot and we won games that enough. Was, that was his problem. At, sorry, Mark. That was his problem at Liverpool. We've done exactly the same yep. thing. And he kept hiking on because he come from Fulham. He kept, he kept talking about how what he'd done at Fulham. And, it, and the, some of the lads, were, 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 I, I think, went against that. Yep. Like, yeah. We live with football. I That's remember, the problem. I went, you don't buy into it. Yeah, you need the, to buy into it. Yeah. We, we didn't have enough England to put into well. it. I remember we played a European game. The fans didn't mm. really buy into it. We played a European game in the UEFA Cup on a Thursday night against a Dutch side, I can't remember who it was. And I thought right to myself, right, you know, I'm gonna play on the left of four midfield here. And I, I thought, right, I'm, I'm gonna do it to the word, position him. So we, we, we were playing against this Dutch, you know, Dutch side, yeah. like they was like, they had good possession. So we were at Anfield against a Dutch side who wasn't as good as us. We had like Fernando Torres and Gerard, blah, blah. And we're, we're shuffling across, we're organized, but we're not having the ball. And then the crowd started to get, I What's going on here? What's going on? You know, it, and I thought to myself, this ain't going to end well for Roy because these fans, yeah, they're not going to accept that style of football, and they didn't. And then the second we went on to win the game in the second half, which, you know, we went one nil, or we won one nil or two nil, but then fans were expecting us to turn up that night and win the game five nil. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And be blown away by the football, and you know what you see, Klopp trying to play or what Kenny yeah. Dalglish's team played, things like that. So. Yeah. So they just didn't buy into what Roy wanted to do. And I really tried to do it. Do you know what I mean? It did yeah. not suit my style of play. No. You know, I need, I, need the, I need possession. I need the ball played through lines and things like that, you know. But I, I tried to do it. I tried to buy into it. It just, it just didn't work for both of us. But throughout the time at Liverpool, he was the ultimate gentleman. Yeah. And so as a man, you put, you put him right up there. Mm. Fast forward now through to, what were you, 40? How old were you, 2013? 2013, 41. 40. Is that right? And that was signing with Chelsea, right? Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. It's, madness. It's like... Well, 40 actually when I signed for Chelsea, yeah, it was mad. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, testament to you as a goalkeeper. And you, play, like, you played a lot. Though, I probably. played a fair few games that season. Um, I didn't play as many as everyone thought, as in certainly Jose yeah. and myself, because Petter decided that year that he wasn't going to get injured and saw right at the end. Yeah. And I take credit for that because I pushed yeah. him. And he, yeah. said to me, he said to me more often than not, and actually in sessions, he goes, we do with something. And Christoph uh, yeah. Lollisham was the goalkeeping coach at the time and mad Frenchman, as I call him. Yeah. Um, and uh, he would do sessions and work us incredibly yeah. hard. Yeah. And m- more often than not, uh, Jose would go bananas about it because he, mm. he just couldn't, we'd turn up and I'd turn up to, to, to the session with him, and you'd be shattered. Yeah. And um, uh, he, he just basically just went, okay, so we, we, we do these sessions, and Pedro go, I look at it and go, you're 40 years old and you're doing this session. I'm, I'm 30 years old. Mm. I can't think, I, I've got to do it, and I've got to do it as well, mm. yeah. better, because how can someone 10 years older than me do it? And I, yeah. I've got no excuses anymore. Yeah. And then when Courtois came the next year, it was kind of like the same, and there was almost mm. like 10 years between each lot, and it was. Yeah, so he didn't give me the opportunity, Petter, so I blame Petter. Uh, yeah. But fortunately, he got injured in the, in the semi-finals of the, of the Champions League and gave me a chance to play in the semi-finals, so That's amazing. it was nice of him. Moving on to a part of the show we call What Really Happened. It's a massive, when we talk about big moments in the Premier League, uh, this is one of the biggest. Anfield 2014, you're in the team, you're pulled into the team. Uh, it's Liverpool basically going to win the league, right? Yep. Wow. Um, wow. What's your memories and, and the infamous Gerard Slip? Yeah. What's your what's your memories of that? Oh, it was an incredible occasion for me personally to go to. I mean, I loved playing at Liverpool. Mm. I loved playing at Anfield, um, let alone going with a club like Chelsea, where we still had an outside chance mm. yeah. of, of winning the league. It was a, very much an outside chance. Liverpool were were kind of running away with it a little bit or certainly mm. had it well within their own grasp to win the, the, the Premier League title. And we'd gone there. It was in between we were playing the Champions League semi-finals. So we just played the first mm. leg away in Madrid. Drew nil-nil. Yeah. Had got injured. I think JT left out because of slight injury concerns potentially. Um, there was a few other players he left out. So we had we had a few players. All the fringe players pretty much were playing. Yeah. Um, then we, we had a centre-back that was making his debut on that day. Never played in the Premier League before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Callas. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and I remember the team talk, and Jose was ill, so he had a bit of a virus, mm. didn't travel up with us, came yeah, into wow. the team talk, listened, spoke for 10 minutes, and then walked out and said, listen, I'll see you at the ground. And he went around and went, okay, this is this game. 
Callis. Unbelievable opportunity. You're making your debut at Anfield. How many players can say they made their debut at Anfield? Mm. Ash, where did you make your debut? And he went, I don't know, say Sheffield United or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, Lamps, where did you make your debut? And he said something similar. And I went, oh, Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he went, Anfield, see? Yeah. Uh, amazing. You know, and um, Eva was playing at centre half. Yeah. And then the minute, basically, it was the tactic was obviously absorbed. You're going to be under pressure, Liverpool, free flying possession. Mm. They want to try and blow teams out of the park. Yeah. We're going to have to contain them. We're going to slow the game down. Because Brendan Rodgers came up saying you played six at the back. It played was... two buses in front yeah, of the yeah, goal, yeah. apparently. Yeah. yeah. So we slow the game down. So from the first minute, he went, the minute we get a goal kick, free kick, whatever it is, Mark, go up to like, you're going to take it. And then Eva, put yourself right out on the touchline and go, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. I'll take it. And then take your time right. to get over there and just... It's going to wind everyone up. Mm. Yeah. Crowd's going to go berserk. Players are going to go berserk. And, and who's saying this? The, the manager. Yeah, jo- Jose. So, Jose. So, I mean, this is what well, you talk about, Jose. And, you, I mean, it's, it's incredible that that is... Because he, he took a lot of flat there. Oh, and, yeah. The two, but that is amazing. To, it was just to, tactics. Like, let's do everything we can. We'll get the tactics right on the pitch. You play how I say we'll set up and you execute it. We'll get a result. Mm. And frustrate them and do all mm. this. This all play its part, and that was kind of like along the line of the, the the team talk. And then we went there and we just went, all right, everyone's written us off. You turn up at the stadium, it was literally like, you know, turning out of Anfield on a normal match day is pretty cool, right? Mm. It's yeah. amazing atmosphere, and particularly if you're Chelsea, the history watch, between yeah. the two. Mm. I can imagine what it'd be like if yeah. you were Man United. I mean, it'd be yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, so. There was like a carnivalish sort of atmosphere. Yeah, they, thing that, they thought they was going to do it. That yeah, day. because they knew yeah. they knew that we weren't playing a strong team. Forty-year-old <clears> goalkeeper, you know, like yeah. they, they knew they, they had a great chance of winning the game. We were resting. Our priority was the Champions League return league against Atletico. Was it five days or four days later? So I think there was a sense of we're going to win this. We're going to do this. And we're going to yeah. we're going to mm. do it in style. It's Jose. And we're going to rub it in his face mm. and all sorts of stuff. It's Chelsea. We're going to get one up. up. And we just went out there and we stuck together we worked hard we played our tactics and I never felt that we just sat back and went come on try and break us down we 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 had chances yeah and we tried to play but we also wanted to frustrate them and slow the game down and they had no plan b Mm. they just played a certain way and that was it and because over the course of the season that had worked for them and they'd break they'd always break teams down eventually we were just that disciplined and that hard working and they got frustrated because we slowed the game down and it worked to the T. What was your, what's your view of the slip? Do you remember it? Do you? Listen, at the time, it was almost like I, I didn't even register who it was. Yeah. It was just like, oh, we've got a great chance here. And, and, and obviously Denver's through and you're thinking, you've got to score. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you, it counts. And it wasn't until afterwards that you kind of go, oh, yeah, shit, it was Steven Gerrard mm. of all players. You know, mm. how harsh is that? You know, yeah. you feel for him. Yeah, yeah, of course. But for us, it was a brilliant a brilliant moment in terms of being able to get your necks in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that frustration, for me, a lot of it was he didn't slip because of frustration. He slept because he was trying to rush things. He looked up. He was yeah. trying to find something. And then realised the ball <clears> popped a bit. Denver was too close. And he tried to quickly get up again or tried to quickly go yeah. for it. And that's when the slip occurred. And that kind of, for me, just kind of added to the whole day of mm, yeah. them feeling utterly frustrated with the way we were playing and it wasn't quite working for them. It's, it's been it's a hard thing of, I, you know, and I always find one of the harshest things of, of, you know, arguably one of the greatest players I've ever seen play this game is Stevie Gerrard. I think, mm. you know, and, and to I mean, he's broken my heart when uh, the FA Cup final oh. there, but, but what a player. And yeah. it, it really, it's, I think it's such a harsh thing that every year when... There's there's a compilation put through the Premier League, the greatest year, league, and that yeah. will some be put somehow be put in the middle. What do you remember of it? Obviously, uh, I was watching the game. I can't You're remember. I can't remember where I was. I can't remember, big man. Um, but I remember watching the game, and knowing Stevie, and like obviously I wanted Chelsea to win. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like when it all dust settled, and you think of uh, it being Stevie, it's heartbreaking because. He's, I think today he got announced in the Premier League Hall of Fame and he's the only player so far to get in there who's not won the title. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you're right, one of the greats. One I mean, of the, you, do, you look at a young young oh, man who essentially takes a team. Dro- let me tell you, yeah, he yeah. drove that team yeah, between the two eras of when they last won the league yeah. to when they won the league, 
they could have been and ended up anywhere if it weren't for Stephen Gerrard. He really was. Listen, they've had great players within them 20 years of company. But like you said, with his personality, with his ability, with his, you know, dragged, you know, with his connection, connection with the city and he's dragged that team out, you know, and he won every trophy apart from the Premier League. Didn't do too badly, though, did he? Listen, no. <laughs> listen we, you, you, you love him, love him as a player, love him as a fella. And it was heartbreaking to think that he didn't do it on that day. But, you know, the theatre, what Mark, Mark said about how what Jose was doing and that day, it's, it's, it's an iconic game. Yeah, is, and his yeah. celebration afterwards. Oh, so you yeah. see him when we score that second goal and the way he celebrated because the plan just worked. And I suppose, I, you can only imagine, as a players as well, you, you're sitting there going, mm. that were the tactics and we carried them out and it worked. And the satisfaction that comes with that. So I can imagine from the manager's mm. perspective, that that's like, that's for them, that's orgasmic. Yeah. You know, that's like, that's the pinnacle. Can he, can he still be, you know, you, We've talked a lot about him. You, you're saying about that. I mean, that, and when you talk about him, I, you know, I've never. I spoke to JT at length with him, uh, and and about, um, uh, you know, when, when he when he came into the uh, dressing room in mm. the uh, in the, the wheelie bin, yeah, in the wheelie bin, and, and sorry, but when we go back, we've got, he has he's got history with the Liverpool facts because I remember we played the League Cup final against yeah. him, and our game was going up. It's amazing. It's another amazing game. We won three two, and um, I just remember looking over and these. The group, these Liverpool fans next to our bench, go ballistic. Like you don't, in the, in the middle, go, what's going on there? Like stewards are pulling him back, and that was when he he was giving them a little bit, you know, when we'd scored the yeah. goal, and they just Jose and the Liverpool fans just had this thing yeah. Yeah. where it was like, yeah, yeah. And I just don't, I don't think the story is, is going to end now. I think there'd be no. some more. But do you think? My question: Do you think he's still got that? Hundred percent. Do, do you think? No but, doubt. But, no doubt. Do, do you think some of that's down to the players? Maybe Tottenham, the guys just didn't buy into that? or, or, or Tottenham, yeah. right? My favourite subject there, because all my pals are Spurs. Yeah. We talked about, you know, so we go on it. And I'm like, when he signed for them, I said, if Daniel Levy lets him get on with it, brings the players in that he wants, you'll win something. If yeah. you don't, it'll end in tears, right? And 100%... He didn't get the players he wanted. You can tell by the way his mannerisms were, yeah. right? So, Tottenham now, you know, you've got a club that's, they, you know, they, they, they're going to lose their best player. But as this is the biggest story of the yeah. week, maybe the biggest story in a long time. Harry Kane saying, mm. I can't remember the last time a, a talisman like that, a club that essentially feels like, it, it, you know, we talk about Stevie Gerrard. Mm. You know, Harry Kane's essentially, in my mind, gone, you know what, well, I... I need to win trophies. I need, I need to have a chance of winning stuff. Mm. What, what's your? Th do you think that there'll be an exodus now from Tottenham? I think there needs to be. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you've had a group of players for five or six years that mm. have been at their pinnacle, but not been able to just take that mm. final step and deliver for one reason or another. Mm. Um, <clears throat> would it have been different had they have won the League Cup? Yeah, but I mean. Mm. Him being sat, we talked at the time. Well, it's the six it's, days before, yeah, and it's yeah, madness. It's, it's, it's completely yeah. mad. You bring the guy in to, whose, whose specialty is winning trophies, yeah. Yeah. and you sack him six with, days with before. A, with a track record against Pep uh, as well. I, I don't yeah. know. Like, that's madness. But that, 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 for me, is a business decision. There would have been something in the contract. Yeah, there would have been a bonus. But that's what I'm saying. Like, for Spurs fans, well, I feel for Spurs fans because they're getting they, you're getting told one thing in one hand, but... Different things in different hands. You know what I mean? I've got no, you know, I've got family as Spurs fans, and, and and there's a part of me. You don't that, care? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, look, I look at it and think there's a part of me that thinks a couple of years ago. I mean, the one thing that really ground my gears. I put a tweet out the other day, and people were like about West Ham not getting the Champions League, and everyone's like, "Oh, try being a Tottenham fan, try being a Hostel fan, try being a Chelsea." I was like, "Go f off!" Uh, exactly. I was like, it's f "Genuinely, like you in the yeah. Champions League for Arsenal, you've had the Invincibles." Yeah, like, yeah, I know. But for this Tottenham side, it feels that. Yeah, you lose someone like it. Like for both of your opinion here, as as players, right? If you're in that situation now, you lose Mourinho. They're, they're, at the moment, there's, it's not like we're hearing the best people are definitely like linked yeah, with that yeah, job. Yeah. I think I think there seems to be a little bit of a pushback on managers going mm. like, "Do I want that job? Do I want the fact?" But then, as players, <clears> if if you're in that dressing room now. Yeah. With Harry Kane turning around, and if you're Son, if you're Larice, you, you if you're Dyer, are you, 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 you going to go? You this is the end of. No, you know. they, they need to act accordingly. There's certain players that don't deserve that, 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 that can't leave Spurs because they can't go any higher than Spurs. Cause, yeah. You know, I'm not being funny. Maybe Son's going to get a move, but the rest of them, that's where you are now. You you, yeah. you 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 need to get together, get players in the door, and crack on. 
Tottenham need to act accordingly for Harry Kane. Now, this is the, because Harry, if Harry Kane wants to leave, what is given to that club? Yeah. You know, they need to do the right thing and, le- and, and let him go to pastures new because I think the fans will, will accept that because yeah. they concede frustration. You get one career and you want to win trophies. He's, he's, he's done everything he has done for that club. But, you know, we're, we're like, and I separate to- Tottenham, the people that run it, to Tottenham, the fans, like, because the people that run it during the, like, during the pandemic when they, when they was borrowing, borrowing money off the government, it's Tottenham yeah. Hotspur. Billy, and plus then you had them, them getting into the European Super, trying to get into the European yeah, Super yeah. League. you just like, it, it just doesn't, the fans, I feel for them. I feel yeah. for them. They, they deserve better. But they know they, they, they've, they've been starved of success. Yeah. You know, for, it's been run like a business and it's been run brilliantly as a business. But as a football club to be successful on the pitch, it's not being run. No. And if they, if, for instance, if they don't, if they try and hardball other clubs on Harry Kane's fee, because he's 27, 28 now, right? So you it's can't a, ask for top dollar. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You, he ain't a 21 year old who's got 10 years ahead of him. No. You know, it just won't it just won't sit well for me. And the club need to do the right thing by Harry, you know, and the right and, and with that money, rebuild and rebuild players that can take them from where they are now, seventh, eighth in the league, back up. Because the fans, you know, the fans have been starved. Yeah. And they've been I feel like they've been lied to. Do you know what I mean by the club? Some of the decisions business wise, like the borrowing of the money, yeah. the European Super League, you know, I think it you know, it, it it needs to be a bit more honesty and transparency within that club if they're going to get... They, they can't see it at the same... They're not at the same level as a Man City, a Liverpool, a Chelsea. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're not there. They're not, but because they, they, they got to act... I think they got to act a little bit better off the pitch. And, and the thing about Spurs is that when you look at the generation of players that they've got currently, for Harry Kane, for a Son, particularly mm. those two players, you talk about going on to something bigger and better, mm. they're, you're probably right. I mean, Lloris... Potentially as well, just because of reputation yeah. and everything else, name, yeah, stature yeah. in the game. I think he's got an opportunity to, to possibly either to PSG Dyer. or something like that. Less. Mm. I, think, Eric, yeah, I don't think there's many others. I actually really don't. I mean, I, I think that, that there's got to be wholesale changes. I think those players you need to look now very much moving on. Do you think that's why, though, if that, if that is their plan, do you think that's why Harry's just gone? You know what? I haven't got time for this. Mm. Well, absolutely. Yeah, Twenty-eight I've, years I've, old. I've, yeah, I've, and he said he himself, himself, he, he, should have, he feels that he should have won something. <clears throat> With this yeah. group of players, you should have won something. Yeah. yeah. And and I think the final nail in the coffin is what happened in the last month or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In terms of Jose leaving, losing his job, whether that's because he agreed or didn't agree with him losing his job at that time, no. it was that. Yeah. They get themselves in a, in, a, in, a, in a in a good position, a very good position to win mm. some silverware. Yeah. And things that happen off the pitch have yeah. certainly hindered mm. their opportunity because that Spurs team didn't, didn't really show up. No, I mean, they, no. It was, it, it was, it, their heart wasn't there. It was no, it, it, whatever it, it is. And it, was, it, it, it wasn't a great display. Yeah. So mm. as a player, I can imagine, I'd be sitting in that change room and then we don't know exactly what went on, right? We, mm. we, we know that Jose has had his moments with various jobs and mm. fought yeah. with everyone and everything else, right? We know that. But we don't really know what went on in that change yeah. room. But as a player, I'd be sitting there going, our best opportunity was then. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be thinking. I, I would think so. Having worked <laughs> under Jose and knowing what it's like, I would have thought that, that would have been our best opportunity yeah. to win something. And mm. if after that they didn't win it and they got yeah. rid of him, surely that's worth the gamble. I know you're yeah, saying yeah. maybe it's a yeah. maybe it's a it's a money thing. Yeah, hundred percent. But the knock-on thing. effect of sacking well, yeah. him and not winning something that certainly I mean, is, it, a, is it, a greater. It's greater led to a place damage. where yeah, Harry's. You know, you talk. You know, Harry Kane, and I mean, the coral odds are in of where he's going to go. Just, just, I've got to do seamless, this. Seamless, it's seamless. Man City, seven to four. Man United, five to two. Chelsea, six to one. PSG, nine to one. Liverpool, 20 to one. Real, 20 to one. Barca, 33 to one. I mean, it's a t- terrifying prospect. I'd be, more impressed. I'd be more impressed he did those ads, oh, those odds without the bit of a laugh. I know. <laughs> I know. And that he yeah. spotted him. And yeah, he just he's seamlessly. He knows I'm on him. That's why. Let's yeah. have a look at them again. Listen, right. if City, I, if he's at City or United, arguably, that's a terrifying prospect going forward. I think the most logical one would be United. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, geez, it'd be good to see him at Chelsea, wouldn't it? God. <laughs> <laughs> God, Em, you, you're a troublemaker, oh, mate. Geez, it'd be I'll good tell to you see what, him at Chelsea. You know, West Ham slipping into that Europa League, mate. It could be... <laughs> <laughs> make a cheeky pick. Hun- make a cheeky 100 pick, to 1. 100 <laughs> to 1 that, that for him to go to West Ham yeah, with Coral. I tell you what, would they not be West Ham owners go... 
elevation in terms of right. Oh, trying to, generally, yeah. trying to get. Oh, right, I'll go around and keep, clean their cars every day for the next two if seasons. I was, if I was a director at West Ham now. Just, I'll be like, lads, should we make a bid for a laugh? Come on, let's get him on the phone. For a let's laugh. get him on the phone. <laughs> come on. Imagine they come out and go, all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that Daniel? <laughs> yeah, listen, we, we just want to... We'll send you over, <laughs> we send you over a fax. For, 30. 30 and a half. 30 and a half. Go on, we're throwing half for you as well. <laughs> um, last but not... So, so looking at that Spurs thing, talking about what Sam, you know, and, and great into the season, hopefully Europa League. But it's a race for the top four for you two. Is that done? Is it, Do you think... Well, I mean, you look at... For me, anyway, I think there's one last twist. And, and I think... Uh, what do you think, I, mate? I think, Leicester, I think Leicester beat Tottenham mm. I think all day long. I yeah, think so Leicester, I think that's a given. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, looking at how awful Tottenham were last night, I think that that happens. And then I, I question Chelsea, Chelsea against Villa. Villa it's a tough Chelsea, one. As Chelsea's eye, all right, Chelsea's eyes on the Champions yeah, League. Uh, I, think, I think the other night against Leicester showed that Chelsea eyes were mm. not... On the Champions League, quite yet. How good were they? The yeah, other night. They looked incredible. That's yeah. the best. That's the best I've yeah. seen in a while. But three, four uh, days to go. Yeah, I mean, if they I'm, needed that massively. Yeah. They needed it for so many reasons. They needed yeah. that performance. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But Villa, are, I thought Villa looked great against. You know, I mean, they're, they're really Villa really are good. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I did the uh, youth cup game. I was speaking to JT, and we were talking about the Villa team, and he was just like, you know. Real good players they've got. They're really happy with the squad they've got. Some young, yeah, that young, young kid player. who came on yesterday yeah. with, uh, against Ch- Tottenham. Chukwemeka. Oh, Is mate, hit the player. post. Mate, I what did a youth cup game with him, Carney Chukwemeka, and I had as much trouble trying to pronounce his game on air as I did just then. But he is a player, mate. He's an incredible you. young player. He, yeah, yeah got yeah. bits. Let, let me tell you, if Jack Grealish does decide to leave Villa, they might have already made replacement in that young man. He, he really impressed me. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we could we could talk about Jack Grealish going, but we'll be here for another hour. Yeah, um, no. What do you, would you do? You think it's done and dusted, or do you think? I'd like to think. I, I just all I'm thinking is that Chelsea and Liverpool have both got themselves in this position with mm. one game to play, and not being disrespectful of Villa because Villa have been mm. tremendous this season, and they've got, mm. as we all know, they've got some really good standout individuals, and yeah. collectively they've been brilliant. But if Chelsea and Liverpool, or either of them, mess it up from this point onwards it's mm. bad yeah it's just madness clubs of that stature don't madness je- when they when they get that many bites of the, the apple they don't usually mess up you know yeah, I mean, so I think every, that, I'm with Mark there some of that I'm comes down to you know some of that comes down to the fact the experience of those moments yeah. right and, and, yeah. and mm. that you know people that you've got in a mix and it's not to say it won't happen yeah <laughs> but I'm just saying mm. if they let it slip from this point it's, down. it's just madness. It's like it's an, a mental approach. I'm throwing another thing in here though. Yeah. Villa at home, Jack Grealish's last game, fans in the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. You worry. You worry me. I know. Yeah, worry absolutely. Me but still, there's, there's so many things to throw in. But still, well, Chelsea talking about their us. squad with their manager, yeah. everything about they it. Should do it. They, they should do it. Mm. Well, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Talking about things that you know, and arse is going <laughs> at big moments. Well, yeah. Right. So we've been doing these predictions all season. Okay. All right. Okay. Where are we? Where right. are we? This is, is, is the final ones now. Okay, this okay. is this is the last roll of the dice. Can we have scores, where we are in the I've league? got the scores. Yeah, I've got the <laughs> scores so far. Okay, so Joe is top of top so far with 19 games correct right, over the yeah, season. Yeah. The guests are second with 18. Oh, it's time. I'm clinging on with 15. If, if you like, I'm Leicester. I'm less <laughs> experienced. I've got two. You know, I've been up against some big football in minds. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, so 15. I, you know, we've got four games left. Right, we're going to do four games because it gives just me a... change the rules like yeah. FIFA, <laughs> just to give Big Tom a chance. You know what I mean? Fucking, this is a liberty, <laughs> stinking liberty from Coral. Um, gives me half a chance to catch you, right? Um, or it gives Mark a chance to absolutely <coughs> okay. tonk both of us. And you know what? I'm, hold I'm on, hold on. Say, let, let's let me just out. say, by the way, uh, Mark is Chelsea away. He's so he's a bright guy, isn't he? Yeah, I know. We've, yeah. we've, we've yeah. not we've not come in here like, for the yeah, last yeah, game of the season. You, this you, guy, yeah. is is quite frankly quite terrifying. Right. Um, I mean, there's always I could roll the <laughs> last dice and we could do a guess on the uh, Champions League final because we're doing <laughs> Wednesday next week. I but. could be naughtier and just predict the same as you and everyone, oh. just to ensure oh. I beat you. But I won't. No, 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 no. But I go last. So All right, okay. Right. <laughs> and so you can't copy, Mark. Yep. I'm, Joe, I'm going to throw to you first. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Aston Villa versus Chelsea. I've got to go Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea. Look, I've got nothing to lose. I want you to have, draw. You've got a game to lose. Oh, right? Yeah, I know. It's hard, isn't it? Uh, too much on it. You've got to choose the draw or the It's too much on it. 
Yeah, you gotta go the other way, haven't you? Have to. He has to. Yeah. I'm gonna go draw. Okay. I'd rather go out on my sword. Palace versus Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, has to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go with all three of us Liverpool there, yeah? Right. Leicester versus Spurs. Draw. Leicester. Leicester for me. And the biggest one, West Ham versus Southampton. West Ham. Mate, you I'm can't not do it. I want to go can't. West Ham as well. Ooh, that's secured the <laughs> okay. victory for me then. Thanks, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> We're throwing them in the mix. There's no going back now. I'm already anxious. Uh, can you text me and Joe those on the group so we can we can be having some banter over the next yeah. <laughs> that last game? Um, uh, Mark, it's been a, honestly an honour yeah. chatting to you, mate. You've been you, Thanks, Mark. such a Cheers. yeah. I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see you more in the game. Actually, you're, you're a really insightful guy, man. It's I can make a bit, comeback. He's yeah, crazy. mate. I'll, I'll, yeah, I was going to say you want to sign him up for your Sunday league thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, let me just give a shout out to sp- we we won the league. Yeah, just yeah. sort of view like we won the uh, Essex Corinthian League Division Five Group J. <laughs> restructure like UEFA yeah. after COVID so we won that with the Invincibles we won 5 out of 5 the boys done great well, we got our of the year dinner in a few few weeks let me just say I want to throw in the little challenge here because yeah. I've come back to Vets football right butter churn my old pub team versus you friendly yes. let's do it for charity Yes. My boys versus your boys. We're on. And I'm coming in at centre back so I can play against Big Tell. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> the that Clash of the good. Titans. Me versus Big Tell. I'll the tell Battle the, of the Beards. I'll, the tell the gra- I'll tell the groundsman to get the, the pitch sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be sh- Do you know what we call Big Tell, didn't you? What? The ox in the box. Mate, he just, mate. he just, he just. He just the finds in the space. box versus the Croydon Bull. That's <laughs> a real game. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. You've been listening to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. See you next time. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.